and the book was that it was a land without people and a people without God. And that was one of the first lies of Zionist Jews. And the weaponizing of Zionism is happening in a very insidious way. If you criticize Israel, you're anti-Semitic. If you criticize the Israeli government, you're anti-Semitic. And we know that criticizing fascism has to happen. The Israeli state as it is, is a fascist state. And many Jews will acknowledge that. They've been protesting for their so-called democracy because the Israeli state wanted to change the laws against the judiciary. And we must be aware that what Israel is doing is doing it only in the name of Zionism and not in the name of Jews. I want to be very clear that the Jewish people around the world and even in Israel oppose this Nakba. This is the second Nakba that we are witnessing live on our television sets. And as a psychologist, I would like to ask you to take care of yourselves when watching all the social media and the news because you can suffer from secondary traumatization. Please find your voices. Please be at demonstrations and please take care of yourself because we need to be strong, resilient for the Palestinians. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, thank you. We also need to treat the South Africa. Firstly, the South Africa. And therefore, a lot of us get confused when you say we are Muslim, we are Christian, we are South African. First of all, and as South Africa, we first need to also congratulate. We need to congratulate the ANC on the SCG, SCJ application. Even if we lose, even if we win, South Africa has made the case. That we need to acknowledge. And we say thank you to the ANC. And I told them this. We do not idolize the ANC. We as civil society will press them. And as the previous speaker said, the next press is to expel the ambassador and to close the embassy. Okay? So we're not idolizing them. But when they do good, as human beings, we need to acknowledge and tell them we have done well. So now it shows they can be pressed. Hello, we're just going to introduce somebody that came out of Cape Town, especially to re represent the organization South African Jews for a Free Palestine. Let's give him a hearing and let's give him a warm welcome. One of the, one of the liberation movements not represented here today, very, very much and very sadly much forgotten today is the PAC. Yeah. We'll do this one chant just for them. Is we to? Is we to? to? Is we to? In Palestine? Is we to? In Palestine? Now the mic is to our is distinguished guest from South African Jews for Palestine. Hi everyone. My name is Jared. I am from South African Jews for a Free Palestine. We're a group of over 100 Jews in South Africa who are fighting for a free Palestine. We're fighting for a free Palestine from the river to the sea. That slogan, from the river to the sea, is not an anti-Semitic slogan. It's calling for freedom for all Palestinians and all people living from the river to the sea. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a slogan that opposes Zionism that opposes fascism. Um, we're here today to to make our voices heard in, in this sleepy uh, tourist town. Look how many people are here. There are lots of people here. If we can do this in every town in South Africa, I'm sure there will be uh, 
huge numbers and I'm sure it has a big impact. We need to start calling not just for the ex expulsion of the ambassador and not just um, for boycotting uh, Israeli businesses, but we need to call on the government to institute sanctions against the Israeli state as well. South Africa is the, is the largest trading partner with Israel on the African continent. The largest. 33% of tra uh, Israeli trade with Africa goes through South Africa. It's, lar it's larger than um, Egypt as a trading partner, even though Egypt is right next door. Why are we, can why, why are we still the largest trading, trading partner with Israel? We need to institute sanctions now. And this, gov now. And this government needs to act. Sanctions now. Sanctions now. Thank you for listening to me. Um, and hopefully next time we meet, it will be uh, uh, with a ceasefire intact. Hi, everyone. Okay, so I'm Candice Riddick, an activist and a feminist. And I just want to point out that this is not a war, it is a genocide. It's not about religion, it's about structural oppression. The same conditions that create a situation that the people of Gaza are currently facing is apartheid. The system of oppression has a name, it's white heteronormative patriarchal capitalism. It affects us all. It is extractive, it is exploitative. And then also just to remember that if it weren't for the international community standing alongside us as South Africans, we may still be living under apartheid. It is our responsibility to stand up for the people of Palestine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of seven, five years of occupation, as well as 90 days of horrific bombing and a destruction of an entire population of people. If that is not genocide, I don't know what is. And I challenge anybody to give me a definition that doesn't call this genocide. As a healthcare worker, this is particularly important to me and personal to me because more than 300 healthcare workers have been killed. That is more than in any other conflict proportionally in the second half of the 20th century. So for me, this is personal. This is extremely personal. I could have been one of those doctors. I think about it every single day. I think about when I open a pack of gauze, doctors in Gaza don't have gauze. When I open a tap to wash my hands to perform a cesarean section, I think doctors in Gaza do not have this. They cannot perform safe surgery. To call it a healthcare system is a joke at this point because it has collapsed. So any healthcare worker that is not extremely vocal about this, shame on you. This is not something that we can say, oh, it doesn't affect us, wash it off, go on with our lives. This affects all of us. As the speaker before me said, this is about structural oppression, and we know all too well about structural oppression in South Africa. And so I urge everybody to use any platform you have. If you have two followers on Instagram, use it. This is not about us. This is about, oh, sorry, this is not just about the Palestinians. This is about all of us, because all of us are Palestinian. If we allow this to happen, if we allow Israel to do whatever they want, then what does that mean for international law? What is the point of international law? So I commend our government for taking this court to the IJC and I'm going to say that I am looking forward to that trial because I've read that document and it is exceptional. So if anybody has not read the 80 page document that Africa has put out, I highly recommend that you have a look at it because it will in black and white put forward the case for genocide, which this absolutely is. So guys, free Palestine. Free Palestine. The chaos at the sea point, the person that saved us all from going to jail on that day, we have her here today in Neisner. So let's, let's give her a warm welcome and she will talk to you. She's an advocate. And that's how we ended up coming through here. 
Um, I just want to say one thing. I, I think we need to start waking up, especially in South Africa. We don't want South Africa to be a breeding ground for Zionists. Please, it's dangerous, it's unacceptable, and we can see what is happening where Zionism takes a foothold. I mean, even our friends in the United States are plagued by the um, difficulty of being, um, of being having to, to, to support the Zionists. Unless they don't, it becomes an economic issue. The same with South Africa. Um, we do know that we're in the midst of difficulty, especially with the DA. At the end of the day, uh, we do know that they are passing a few bylaws. Please be clear that you definitely take it to Parliament to say that you are not going to be a part of that where they want to ban the Palestinian flags. They want to stop people from facing their homes the way they want to. They want to have a foothold in our lives. Stop it. Don't accept it. And all I can say is there's a genocide unfolding. We cannot bury our heads in the sand any longer. We need to wake up. We need to understand that if we don't take a foothold here in South Africa and stop what is happening, uh, you know, uh, things are going to just carry on. The international community have done very little in the way of a ceasefire. We're fighting for that all the time. You do know we are going to court people on the 11th of January. Uh, please uh, stay tuned to your TVs. Watch what is happening. South Africa, goes, South Africa goes before the court for two hours to state their case. Amandla, South Africa! Thank you, everybody. It's time to speak and I said no, it is time for your voice to be heard. Let's give her a good welcome. Thank you, thank you very much. I think the one thing that we have to be the one thing that we have to be grateful for, Palestine has shown us a lot. But I think the one thing we have to say thank you for is a sense of purpose. How often is it that we go through our life and we say what is my purpose? What am I here for? To rise up against injustice, then I don't know what a better purpose is in life. We have the opportunity not only to stand on the right side of history, but to be counted on the people who have done right. People who are moral and fight for humanity. To say that humanity does exist. The fact that you have come out here today, whether you're going to come out tomorrow, we do not know. Nobody knows what it is. But for today, you have purpose. We trust that going forward we will have steadfastness because that is what we are striving for and that is what we see with the people of Palestine. Do not feel sorrow for them. Whatever they are going through, they are showing us that they can handle it because they have steadfastness and they have patience, Uncle Ridwan. But we make sure to you, firstly we thank Allah, we thank our Lord Almighty for allowing us the opportunity to come out here together and give uh, share our solidarity with the people of Palestine and Gaza. We thank Allah for keeping us safe while we were here. We thank you. We ask Him to take us safe home, and we ask Him to keep us steadfast in our resolve.